Hello. It's time to learn about the Pythagorean identity. We know from Pythagoras that any time we've got a triangle with the sides A, B and C, that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If we think about how that relates to the unit circle triangle, we know if we've got a unit circle here and we've got that triangle, I'm just going to zoom that triangle out over here. It's the same triangle that we've got before, except we know that this length here is the same as sine theta. And we know that this length here is the same as cos theta. And we also know that this length here must be 1 because it's the hypotenuse and it's the radius of the unit circle. So if we take those things into consideration, we can rewrite our Pythagorean identity there as saying we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1 squared. And really, that's exactly the same as 1. We can get rid of the 1 squared. This is what we call the Pythagorean identity for, their, for our unit circle. This is given to you on the formula sheet for this topic. Uh, so on your formula sheet, if you have a look at the second page down, um, sorry, under the heading of basic identities, this is the first one given to you. Except it doesn't actually give it in terms of theta, it gives it in terms of x. So if I just rub out those thetas and put an x in there, then we can get exactly how it's written. So you're going to get asked questions on using the Pythagorean identity. Uh, they're fairly simple questions that we can solve algebraically, or it's quite possible to solve them with a bit of a diagram. There's two sort of different methods here. Uh, so I'm going to show you both of those at the same time uh, here. So a typical question might be something that looks like uh, this. So here's a typical question that might get asked of us in a test or an exam situation. Given that cos x equals negative 12 on 13 and pi on 2 is less than x, which is less than pi, find sine x. You'll notice that we're not asked to find x anywhere and we're not going to in solving this problem. We don't really need to know what the angle is at all. We're only asked for what is one ratio of our angle given another ratio of our angle. This third bit of information over here tells us what quadrant we're in. This is the, a test or an exam situation way of expressing to the student what quadrant we're in. We know that our angle must be greater than pi on 2, and we know that it must be less than pi. So given that we've got 0, pi on 2 is there, pi is there, and 3 pi on 2 is there, we know that it must be greater than pi on 2, so it's and less than pi, which tells us we're going to be in quadrant two. That tells us that sine is going to be positive, cos is negative, and sure enough, it is negative. So that makes sense. Uh, and But we'll, we're actually going to use that little bit of information a bit later on. First, we need to know what the actual value is that we're then going to make positive or negative as appropriate. To do that, you, it should be obvious that we've got cos and we need to find sine and our Pythagorean identity gives us a link between sine and cos. So that tells me that substituting the values in as appropriate, we don't know what sine squared x is yet, but we do know that uh, cos x, so cos squared x equals 1. This value of cos squared x I can write as sine squared x plus negative 12 over 13 squared equals 1. Uh, and thus, I'm going to get my calculator out to make sure that I do this bit correctly. Uh, that tells me that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus, and I'm going to do 12, negative 12 squared, which is 144, over 13 squared, which is 169. Uh, thus, 1 minus 144 over 169 is equal to uh, 25 over 169 and when I'm doing the square root of that sine of x is equal to the square root of 25 over 169 and it should be the positive or the negative square root 
of that, um, which is, and I can do the square root of 25, which is five over the square root of 69, 169, which is 13. And we're dealing with the positive or the negative value, but we know that since we're trying to find sine and we're in quadrant two, that we're going to be dealing with the positive value. So I've found sine that way. That's a fairly typical application of this. Now I'm going to show you the second method as well. There's another way of dealing with these sorts of problems, and that is to identify as soon as you get, uh, let me change my pen color so that we've had a different solution in a different color. Um, as soon as we get given a ratio, like we are given here with our cos value, we can easily draw a triangle that has that ratio. So in this case, I can just draw that, any sort of triangle that fits, um, and we know that cos, if this is my x value in there, cos is adjacent. So that's my adjacent value, which is 12. I'm only worrying about absolute values. I don't worry about negatives here. My hypotenuse is going to be 13 because cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. And using Pythagoras, I can easily do 13 squared minus 12 squared tells me that this value as a Pythagorean identity must be 5. So if I know that that value has to be 5, then sine x is going to be equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to 5 over 12. And then we just need to consider that we're in quadrant 2. And so in quadrant 2, sine is positive, and thus sine x equals 5 over 12. This method allows us to completely ignore positives and negatives. I ignored the negative 12 earlier. Um, I didn't put this line here as negative 12, I just put it in as 12, uh, showing that when we get to our final answer, um, we haven't considered negatives and positives throughout. It could be negative or positive, just like it could have been over here with the previous question, um, or sorry, with the previous method. Um, but once we get to this point, we can just add our positive or negative in later by thinking about what quadrant we're in based on this information that comes from up there. So those are two different methods of tackling the same problem. I'll also point out you will quite often get questions that ask for tan x, um, so maybe it gives you tan x and it asks you to find another ratio, or it uh, gives you another ratio and it asks you to find tan x. Um, our Pythagorean identity, this one all the way up here, sine, x, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, that identity doesn't have tan in it. Now we could do this algebraic method with tan, remembering also the identity that tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. So that will allow you to calculate tan x given any of the other values. But it should be pointed out that this method here that I sh showed you um, works really well for tan x without needing any other complications. So most people tend to find this method that I've done in blue, this one with the triangle down this side, uh, to be a very simple way of tackling those sorts of questions. Um, that's the explanation. I'm going to finish there, and I'm going to let you tackle some exercises out of the book.